On today's two on your side town hall vaccine production is ramping up. So why does it seem Western New York maybe isn't getting the supply that some other parts of the state are? We're going to have the perfect guest to provide us some insight on that. Plus, there's a lot in the COVID relief bill that passed this afternoon, including a historic expansion of the child tax credit. Our verified team has everything you need to know about that. And we hate to be the bearers of bad news, but we're all going to lose out on an hour of sleep this weekend as we spring forward. We're going to talk to a Western New York lawmaker who says it's time that we stop changing our clocks twice a year. Look forward to that, but we will start the town hall tonight with the vaccine rollout that is still causing plenty of frustration. Yeah, despite all the good news of new vaccines getting approved and increased production, the reality remains right now that there just simply are not enough doses yet for everybody who is eligible. And it seems that Western New York may be getting a little bit shortchanged if you look at the numbers. So we took a look at how many first doses per 100,000 residents are going to every region of the state. You can kind of see the list there. Western New York is third from the bottom. And that map on the left shows which counties have vaccinated the biggest parts of their population. Areas in blue, pretty average. Green is above average and gray is below. So areas like the North Country, which has the most vaccinated people, very green. They're getting a lot of doses. Western New York has several gray counties. Joining us live right now with some insight on all this is Dr. Nancy Nielsen. She is chair of the Western New York Vaccine Hub and senior associate dean for health policy at UB's medical school. I should also note she is a past president of both the Erie County Medical Society and the American Medical Association. And I just learned, like me, a West Virginia native. Dr. Nielsen, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, Good to be with you. It is great to have you back and we want to start by just sort of a blunt question because we see the numbers right there. Is Western New York getting its fair share of vaccine doses? Well, think about it this way. If they sent an equal amount to every place, uh, then the answer is no. But what they're trying to do, what the state is trying to do is is uh, deal with health equity so that the people who are eligible, the people now over 60, the people with comorbid conditions, the number of those in an area that it's sent depending on the population in that area. So let me let me not be obscure about this uh, because we're really not far behind. New York State, 20, as of today, 20.3% 20 of New Yorkers have gotten their first dose and about half of that, 10% 10, 10 have gotten both doses. In Western New York, it's pretty close. It's 18.6 have gotten one dose and about half of that 10% have gotten two doses. So we're not far behind and we're tracking right with the rest of the US. But there are certain areas that are clearly underserved with vaccine. Allegheny County, as I think we've talked about before, uh, still needs more vaccine. Dr. Nielsen, I want to play something that we heard earlier today from Erie County Executive Mark Polencars uh, regarding vaccine distribution here. Let's listen to this. We've always heard that more doses were coming, and, and in the last couple of weeks, more doses have come compared to a month ago. Uh, what we really need is the numbers that they said we were going to get, not six or 7,000 doses a week, 15,000 doses a week. So we'd really like to be double what we're going to be able to do this week. It's just not there yet. And this is something, Dr. Nielsen, that we hear all over the country, right? You, you can't get enough doses because thankfully a lot of people want to take this vaccine. But the Erie County executive did say today that he, he worries next week he may get about half the number of doses compared to what he's getting this week in Erie County. And I know these things fluctuate, but I think a lot of people out there watching just expect that we're going to keep getting more and more doses each and every week. Um, and, and that's not necessarily the case right now, right? No, it, it really isn't. The reason we got a fair amount this week is that big supply of the newly approved Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And we knew that we would get a big supply this week and then none next week. So it's, uh, it's uh, as, as one of my colleagues says, it's a bullwhip. You know, you, you, you either get a lot and you run and dispense it or you wait for it. So it is a real problem, but we hope that with the increased production, as the president has promised, uh, that we'll have a more steady supply. Clearly, this week, we got about twice what we got about four or five weeks ago. 
Yeah, it is a little confusing because it does seem like it's kind of random, you know, sort of crossing your fingers and hoping that you're going to get a, a good supply on any given week. Is there anything that Western New York leaders could be doing or should be doing, do you think, in order to get more doses sent? Yes, yes. Good question, Kate. And, and I think that that people involved with the regional hub and our leads, uh, you know, Mark Sullivan, CEO at Catholic Health and Michael Kane, the dean of the medical school at UB and Tom Quattrochi, head of ECMC, uh, they have advocated very strongly with the state to get vaccine where there is a disparity whether that disparity is due to racial and ethnic issues, which we really ought to talk about, or if it's geographic like Allegheny County. And that has begun to pay off. Yeah, th let me end by picking up right on that then. Where do you think um, those disparities are um, and maybe talk a little bit more um, about Ale Allegheny County and, and how do we solve those? What do you think we should be changing or doing um, differently? Well, how do you solve it? You got to get more vaccine where it's needed. And that's the important part. So this past week, the state sent 3,500 doses down to Jamestown, the, the Jamestown Community College in Olean. So that's in Cattaraugus County. But between Allegheny, Cattaraugus and Chautauqua County, 75% of those shots went to those people, which is exactly what we wanted. We still need more for Allegheny and we will get it. We'll keep advocating for that. We have been talking with Dr. Nancy Nielsen, who not only chairs the Western New York Vaccine Hub, she's also the Senior Associate Dean for Health Policy at UB's Medical School and a former president of both the Erie County Medical Society and the American Medical Association as well. Dr. Nielsen, we show, so appreciate your expertise. Uh, thanks again for being here. You bet, thank you all. Great to see you. We hope to see you again soon. Let's turn right now to the big news that is breaking this evening at the U.S. Capitol. The House passing President Biden's COVID relief bill and all that is left now is for him to sign it into law. And as we look live at D.C. right now, we want to zero in on one part of the package, the child tax credit. So it got expanded in a big way and a lot of families watching right now will get monthly payments for each kid 18 and under. Yeah, tonight, what you need to know about this, and we're trying to debunk some of the misinformation that's out there. Evan Kozloff with our Verify team reports. We know that there are a lot of numbers being thrown around about the COVID-19 relief bill, and the Verify team is here to go to the experts to find out what's real and what's just social media rumors. And we've noticed a lot of questions about the child tax credit. What is it and who does it help? To get answers, we spoke with Edward Carl, the Vice President of Taxation at the American Institute of CPAs. And we got pretty deep in the weeds on this issue. And you're looking for a weed whacker here. We also looked through the America Rescue Plan itself. Let's start with the basics. How much is the credit and who qualifies? The answer, according to Carl, is $3,600 per year for each child under six and $3,000 for children six to 17. This is a big change from the past, back when we had tax credits of just $2,000 per child and 17 year olds were excluded. Now there are some income requirements here, phasing out with an individual income of $75,000 and a joint income of $150,000. Next, let's verify where's the IRS getting their information on your income and number of kids. Carl says it's gonna be based on your latest tax returns. If you've already filed your 2020 return, it would be based on that. If you have not, then it would be based on your 2020, 2019 return. Okay, what about if you have a child that was 17 when you filed your taxes, but is now 18? Carl said that for now, it appears that you will get paid for that child. It looks like that you would um, benefit from that. They would not make you pay it back. What about if you had a baby this year? Will you get paid for them? Carl says that the answer is yes, but as a credit next tax season, not in a payment this year. You could have a baby born on December 31st and still qualify for the dependency. Now, Carl says that these monthly payments could start going out as early as July. Reporting here at the Capitol, this is Evan Kozloff with your Verify. And Kate, we were joking earlier today with Evan because during that interview with that expert, he said, you know, I'm warning you, I'm getting into the weeds here, but there are specifics and sometimes it's it's good to get in the weeds. It sure is. <laughs> and if there is something that you'd like us to verify, because why not let Evan get into the weeds yeah. than you? There are lots of ways to get in touch. Yeah, you can send us a message on social media, email us at verifywgrz.com or text us 849-2200 is the number.